Hi viewers, welcome back. We will discuss about standard instrument departures and arrival procedures. This is our uh, lecture one, which is on standard instrument departures, SIDs. Aircraft while in arrival and departure from an airport usually fly on set flight paths. These flight paths are known as SIDs, which are standard instrument departure and STARS, standard arrival routes. These flight paths dictate how aircraft enter and leave the airport and this will place some restrictions for speed and altitude. But why do airport need these set paths? The main reason aircraft must follow SIDs and STAR is to de-conflict potentially conflicting traffic by the use of specific routings, levels, speed restrictions, and checkpoints. The flight crew shall comply with the published SID and STAR speed restrictions and altitude restrictions unless the restrictions are explicitly canceled or amended by the controller. Before the implementation of SID and STARS, the flight trajectory of aircraft was scattered. This is not useful in heavy traffic environment, as these path results in multiple conflict points in air to air traffic control. High degree of alertness, situational awareness is desired. This will also increase radio telephony congestion and chances for loss of separation increases manifold. So, with the use of SIDs and STARS, the flight paths are more predictable, confined, and air traffic controller can accommodate more aircraft in a given volume of airspace. It helps in reducing the separation between two aircraft to even three nautical miles. So, SIDs and STARS ensures that aircraft can safely operate and minimum separation is maintained. The primary role of having SIDs and STARS is to prevent conflicting traffic around the high traffic airports. So a standard instrument departure route is the standard air traffic service route identified in an instrument departure procedure by which aircraft should proceed from takeoff phase to the end route phase. SIDs are graphical and textual representation of departure path from an airport. It shows track and distance between two waypoints, speed and altitude restrictions at waypoints, and the state and nautical information service section is responsible for publication of SIDs navigation charts. SID altitude restrictions can be of four types, mandatory altitude, minimum altitude, maximum altitude, and combination of minimum and maximum. So mandatory altitude at a waypoint is the altitude aircraft has to maintain, which is shown in bars below and above. Minimum altitude is shown as a bar below the level, which means that aircraft should fly at or above this level. Maximum altitude, a bar above the level means aircraft should fly at or below this level. Combination of levels, this is the block of levels which is given between two bars. If ATC instructions climb by SID, an aircraft has to maintain lateral and vertical profile and follow all altitude and speed restrictions of the SID. If ATC issues a vector which will take you off an SID, SID procedure, then all the altitudes will be assigned by ATC. This will cancel the SID. Otherwise, ETC must advise the pilot what to expect when the vector is completed. Like, expect to resume SID. So when the controller adds a phrase, expect to resume SID, pilot should, should be prepared to rejoin the SID at a subsequent fix. SID speed restrictions are depicted in charts. Phraseologies for SID speed restrictions are resume normal speed, resume public speed, cancel speed restrictions. So resume normal speed means whatever ATC speed restrictions were imposed, that will get canceled and it will allow pilot to return to the normal aircraft speed. But he has to follow all the speed restrictions of the upcoming segment of the flight or of a particular airspace. Resume public speed means it will cancel the previously imposed ATC speed restrictions, but pilot has to follow all the charted speed restrictions of the SID. Cancel speed restrictions of a SID or a waypoint. It means that it will cancel all the public speed restrictions of a SID or speed restriction at a particular waypoint. So when a pilot is changing frequency or on initial contact, he has to advise the air traffic controller of his current altitude, climbing and descending via procedure name, runway transition. And if the previous controller has issued any altitude or speed restriction, 
which is not a part of SID or star, he has to inform the next controller. Clearance on a SID. One must be familiar with the applications of SID clearances using level and speed phraseologies. Clearance for SID shall be issued by ATC, which is in the order mentioned, SID identifier, runway news, and assigned level. So here, Air India 112 cleared via ICAO 1 Bravo departure, plan to flight level 200. Now we will discuss the amendments which were uh, given by ICAO through DOC 4444, amendment number 7. These are the phraseologies which are now most commonly used. So first scenario is climb on a SID with charted restrictions. So ATC will uh, say, I fly 453, climb by SID to flight level 100. The aircraft will reply accordingly. And what is anticipated action by pilot? That I fly 453 will climb to flight level 100 and will comply with all the charted speed and level restrictions at or below flight level 100 of this particular SID. Second scenario, climb on SID, tactical cancellation of a speed restriction. So ATC is saying, I fly 453, climb by SID to flight level 100. Cancel speed restrictions and PIPAN. So I fly 453 will climb with uh, all the level restrictions and speed restrictions except over BIPAN. He need not to follow the speed restriction of BIPAN. Scenario number three, climb on SID, tactical cancellation of a level restriction. So I fly 453 climb by SID to flight level 100, cancel level restrictions and ban it. So here, here, ATC is saying, I fly 453, climb by SID to flight level 100, cancel level restrictions at ban it. So over ban it, the level restrictions at, at or below flight level nano zero. So this restriction is being removed by ATC, but contr uh, controller uh, has uh, not given him any other freedom. So the pilot has to follow the altitude restrictions of BIPAN and LAPOT. Next scenario, climb on SID cancellation of all restrictions below the cleared level. So suppose ATC is saying climb, uh, IFLAP 453, climb unrestricted to flight level 100. Or he can say like this, IFLAP 453, climb to flight level 100, cancel level and speed restrictions. There are only two types of uh, restrictions, level and speed. So both are have been canceled. So in this way, IFLAP 453 is anticipated that he will climb to flight level 100 and up to flight level 100, he will not follow any charted restrictions that all the level and speed restrictions will get cancelled. Now, aircraft is going after departure from runway. Uh, he has to go towards the Panway point. Thereafter, uh, Banet, then Laporte, then Delta Papa 404, then Alpha Lima India, VOR. And thereafter, he will join uh, Romeo 460. So it is saying that after 453, proceed direct to Laporte, climb by SID to flight level 120. Remember this word that if he is saying this phrase, that climb by SID. So climb by SID means that he has to follow the charter restrictions, but he has been given some waypoint direct. So after takeoff, he has been given direct Laporte. So he is bypassing two waypoints, Bipan and Banik. So in this case, this IFLAP 453 aircraft has not to follow the level and speed restrictions of BIPAN and BANET, but he has to follow the SID restrictions of LAPOR, Delta Papa 404, and so on. As he has been given climb via SID and he has to rejoin uh, SID at LAPOR. So LAPOR restriction is at or below flight level 100 that he has to respect. Then scenario number six, vector flight of a SID. ATC will say IFLAP 453 turn left heading 190 due traffic climb to flight level 900, expect to rejoin SID. So simply he will uh, follow that guidance and uh, SID, he will keep it in FMS for future rejoining uh, instructions. So if rejoin instructions have been given, but uh, prior uh, notice has not been given. So in this case, I apply 453 turn left heading 190 due traffic, climb to flight level 60, but here the controller is not saying that expect to rejoin. So in this case, SID will get cancelled. But subsequently, if he says that now rejoin, uh, so I will uh, repeat the phraseology. It is the FF453 proceed direct to lap off, rejoin banner departure, climb by SID to flight level 1 to 0. So he has given one heading initially 190, and in between he has given you subsequent uh, uh, instructions to rejoin. 
Banitu and departure at a waypoint known as Lapot. So you are bypassing two waypoints, Bipan and Banit. So you will not be going to follow the restrictions of Bipan and Banit. And but after that, uh, you have to follow this SID from Lapot. So Lapot restrictions and Delta Wapa 404 and so on, all the restrictions you have to follow. Next uh, scenario number eight, SID rejoining uh, instructions when prior notice have been issued like at the 453 left heading 190 due trap, climb to flight level 60, expect rejoin SID. So pilot will uh, keep the SID in his FMS for uh, further instruction and await for the further instructions from the ATC. Then uh, subsequently, if ATC is saying that I fly 453, proceed direct to Laport region, SID climb by SID to flight level 120. So he will simply uh, tune uh, Laport in his FMS and uh, proceed to Laport and he will follow the SID restrictions from Laport onwards. So if the aircraft is on ground, he will ask for the ATC clearance. So ATC will reply in this way. Ground clearances will be uh, phrased in this way that I renew 102 clear to Mumbai. Quebec to runway 28, climb and caught one proud departure to flight level 60, squawk 0571. First is call sign, then thereafter destination Mumbai, then uh, Quebec to the airway, the ATS route, then uh, runway is uh, 28. The caught one proud departure is your SID. Initial uh, level has been given 60, and squawk, uh, which has to be set, is uh, 0571. So, hope uh, this will clear uh, all the doubts regarding SIDs. Next lecture will be on uh, stars. Uh, see you soon. Take care. Good day.